How was this set? It was fun working on The Sopranos? It was literally, when you hear this, you hear a lot of people say this, and it's kind of cliche. Right. Oh, it's a big family. We were like a big family. We loved each other. We loved being around each other. All right, it's Monday at 11 o'clock. You know what that means. It's the Chaz Palminteri Show. We got a great show for you today. But before we do that, I want to remind you, if you never saw the one-man show, you've got to come and see it. This is, bef this is the show before the movie, before the musical. This is the show that Robert De Niro saw. And I was this young actor doing this play, a one-man show about a story about my life. And uh, everybody in Hollywood wanted it. You know the story. I don't want to bore you with that. But this is the original one-man show. If you want to see it, go to chazpalmentary.net. John, where am I going to be in the next few months? April 13th, you're going to be in Clarksburg, Virginia at the Robinson Graham Performing Arts Center. Great place. I like that place. Go ahead. April 20th, you're going to be in Atlantic City at the Ocean Resort Casino. Atlantic City! Ocean Resorts, folks! And then May 18th, you're going to be in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the American Music Theater. Yes. And then May 31st, you're going to be in Ridgefield, Connecticut at the Ridgefield Playhouse. The Ridgefield Playhouse... I love that because it's right up the block for me. <laughs> it's really close. I love the Richfield Playhouse. A great place to see the show. Also, don't forget my restaurants. Uh, listen, I never say my restaurants are the best Italian food in New York. I say it's one of the best because there's a lot of great restaurants in New York. I've been so many great Italian restaurants. I go to Carbones. Carbones is a great restaurant. If you've never been there, check it out. You know, I have no qualms giving shout-outs to other restaurants. Carbones is a great Italian restaurant. Cat's Deli. Who could forget Cat's Deli, right? Come on. And uh, so I just want to bring up, I have my own wine that just came out. Look at this. This is Chaz Wine. It's a Cabernet from California. Look, a lot of people put their name on it because they want to make money. Of course I want to make money. But I went through a year of te testing and tasting with this. It's a great Cabernet. It's doing very well. And let's not forget my cigars, a Bronx Tale Cigars. Again, two, no, almost three years of testing. Okay, this is dedicated to my, my grandfather, who always smoked a cigar, big cigar aficionado, came to this country with nothing. And if it wasn't for him, a Bronx Tale wouldn't be here. So even if you don't, smoke cigars this is a great gift to give to your uh, parents or somebody who came to this country and struggled now <clears throat> my guest been wanting to have him over for a long time but people th this guy is a renaissance man he's a multi-talented guy an actor an artist i mean he does everything but first i just want to br when i bring him out you know him. When you see him, you're going to know him. But I know where you're going to know him from. He played Furio, right? Flori Furio. Furio. Yep. Furio on The Sopranos. Here he is, Federico <laughs> Castelluccio. Jazz, what a pleasure to be here, man. Ah, Thank you. No, it's Thank a pleasure you. to meet you. Big fan for, for many years. Thank man. you. I could say right now that you became a hot throb back then. Oh, you really? were a hot throb. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> I'll you take know, that. <laughs> and, we, and guys would go, are you kidding me? He's going to bang the boss's wife? <laughs> <laughs> what is this guy, fucking crazy or something? I mean, I mean, yeah. you had to go through that dilemma sometimes, right? Absolutely. As the, was, uh, the first time I heard about it was actually, you know how you know HBO would have these lavish parties and every, right. You know, right before we would start the next season. Right. So right before the fourth season, uh, we were at this, this HBO party and I'm talking to somebody and right. I, from the corner of my eye, I see somebody trying to get my, my attention. And it was Edie Falco. She was there with one of the, the producers, Eileen right. Landris. And she, she looks at me. She goes, Federico, next season, it's me and you. I'm like, I said, great. Um, really? I mean, I was like, holy crow, what the hell is that all about? So now <laughs> you're saying, if I'm a love interest, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dying. That's it. He's, he's done. You knew so that I, you were dying soon. Well, you know what? The first, <clears throat> first script that I got uh, for the fourth season yeah. <laughs> was... Carmela, the, the doorbell rings. Carmela looks, primps her hair in, in the in the mirror, and then opens the door, and Furio is there. And so I went to uh, to Terry Winter, who was uh, one of our writer producers, right. 
And I said, Terry, uh, I got to talk to you. Said, does, uh, does Furio get this this year? <laughs> he goes, he goes, no, Federico, it's not going to happen that way. It's not going to happen that way. I said, all right, good, good. Because <laughs> now I heard after, <clears throat> after Vinny Pasteur died in the first episode, somebody told me that when he did that, everybody in the cast, when they got the script, they would go, am I dying? Oh, yeah, this? yeah, yeah, Is that exactly. True? We would always like flip through the script to see if we were next. <laughs> yeah, know? because... I mean, yeah, no, it was because that's that's the reality of that life, you know. Yeah, it's I mean, like you and, never know. It's yeah, like and plus it's the reality of life in general. In life in general, yeah. but plus when you when you when you see one of the lead guys die, yeah, that sends shivers down everybody's like, holy yeah, well, shit! And I think that that's what set the Sopranos apart from every other show prior right, to that, right? Because you know you never killed like one of the leads, you right? Know? And uh, yeah, but you know what's amazing <laughs> about. And with a, a moment about uh, Vinny Pesto, a big shout out to Vinny. I yeah, love the guy. Yeah, great guy. We, known Vinny way he, before Sopranos. Yeah, way before the Sopranos. He did one season. And he's like, when they see him, exactly. they go, <laughs> big, big pussy. pussy. <laughs> I mean, his impact on that show was incredible. He's great. It's his voice and everything, yeah. his look. <clears throat> hey, you know, Tony, hey, Tony. You know, he's got that, that and great, I remember rich voice. he said, don't shoot me in the face, you know. Yeah. Oh. God, it was yeah, just. Yeah. But everybody, you know what? Even though, even though it was a it was a series, a television series, right? He was one of us. He was really, you know, we became friends. He was right. like family, and to to do that, it was very difficult for the guys. I remember it was on set. They had built a set uh, for the boat, and they were right. rocking it back and forth. And it's like the mood was really sort of um, morose. Really, that I mean, that did time. he? Well, obviously. How long, how did he know he was going to die? Did he read that at the last week, the minute? Or? No, no. What happens is, <laughs> I don't know if you heard this, but David Chase always calls you prior to that. If, if you're, if you're going to die or if you're leaving or if something's happening where you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, not going to be on the show anymore, <sighs> he'll give you a call. The week, the week <laughs> of? Or? Well, sometimes it's, it's before the next episode. I see. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> You know, it's not too much time, but with, with my character, I already knew <laughs> like early on when I spoke to, uh, yeah. uh, to Terry Winter. That you were okay the first year. Uh, well, no, the first, that, this, this is the, 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 uh, my last year was the uh, fourth season. Oh, so then he told you. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. bye bye time. Well, it, see, the thing is that when I, when I went to, um, when I went to Terry Winter and I said, does he get this? <laughs> he said, no, it's not going to happen that way. So. I knew something was going to happen to Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Now, how how was how was the set? It was fun working on the Sopranos. It was literally you know, when you hear this you hear a lot of people say this and it's kind of cliché. Right. Oh, it's a big family. We were like a big family. We loved each other. We loved being around each other. Um, you know, we would work for 16, 18 hours and at the end of it, Gandolfini would come over and say, "Want to get something to eat? Want to have a drink by Michael's place?" You know, we would go into the city and then have a drink. You know, one time I remember we were supposed to go to Jilly's, the opening of Jilly's, remember? Yeah. And uh, we were working late, and we didn't have a suit or anything, so we went to wardrobe, and they lent us a suit to go to that that uh, opening, to that party. Yeah, because I, I hear stories, because obviously I know a bunch of people on that show, and and I know Catherine Narducci and Tony Sirico. Love and, Catherine. And, and, and uh, Stevie, and, and they all said that it was... But, you know, there's an old Italian saying... <clears throat> uh, and I don't know how to say it in Italian, but the fish thinks from the head down. Yeah. You know, and James was, Jimmy was so wonderful. And he, he made, put everybody at ease. And I didn't know him well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know him, but I never want to claim that I was, I knew him like you guys did. I, I knew of him. We talked a few times. He was talked. humble. Very, very, there's a lot of humility I, I with mean, him. Like unbelievable humble. Yeah. Yeah, he would call me from time to time because, you know, he was like, he, he would always like whisper to me and say, I don't know why the fuck they want my, my opinion, you know. He would hate like the, the, the media part of it. He, he just want he loved the work of it. Yeah. The work part of it, uh, which we all do. That's, that's yes. what it's really all about. And uh, from time to time, he would call me and say, hey, man, you know, I'm supposed to do this thing, you know, speaking in front of the audience. Or, would you mind going for me? And I would. Uh, of course, oblige. You know what I mean. I would always do yeah. it for him. Yeah, he, he was. I don't think was he shy. Or? Yeah, he maybe. Was a, maybe I he was he, very. He he was. He, he was. was uncomfortable with stardom. He was totally. 
He was yeah. totally uncomfortable with stardom. Yeah, he always you felt know? like um, somebody was going to blow a whistle and say, all right, come on, you don't belong here, you know? Exactly. And he, his acting was incredible. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I, a lot of people didn't know who he was, his name. Like, they, they had seen him in, you know, supporting roles here and there, but they didn't really know who he right. was. I knew who he was. Yeah. In fact, when, uh, <clears throat> when I, uh, you know, when I first heard about The Sopranos, uh, I, was, I was dating a, a girl at the time, and she said, listen, when you come into the city, I'm going to show you backstage. I think you'd be right for something in this. And I said, well, what is it? She said, it's The Sopranos. <laughs> I go, I said, Stephanie, I don't, I don't, I don't sing, man. I said, what is she right, goes, right. she goes, no, no, no. But you know, it's, I don't think it's about that. She said, you know, there's a lot of people that you know in it. You know, Michael Imperioli, I knew him oh, because Michael. we used to yeah. cross paths in the theater circuit. I started yeah. in theater in New York, and uh, and then of course she, she mentioned Gandolfini's name. I said James Gandolfini. I would always see this guy's name. I was always look for his name. Yeah, you know, because he he he's like a great he, character. Yeah, he really stood out. You yes, know? you know. I mean, that was the, because I know a lot of, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, so don't quote me on this. I think Ray Liotta was the first one they went to, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I heard. Oh, okay. And for whatever, I know they came to you, right? They came to me, yeah. but, but down the line they came to me. I think they went to Ray Liotta first, and uh, I, they might have, I don't know if they went to Travolta, and then they came to me. And, for Tony Soprano. For Tony Soprano. Yeah. And I read the script, and I was like, holy shit, this is a great script. Mm. But it's back in 1997. Uh, yeah. I just- A lot of film actors didn't do television. A lot of film, and... but it wasn't even that. And I always tell people the reason why, because I, I, I had throat cancer, and I just got over oh it. Oh, my God. Wow. So, yeah, so I just got over it, and I, wasn't, I was just getting back on my feet. And to work those many hours, I didn't, I didn't want to do it, I, so I couldn't do it, and- but I just said I'm going to pass. You know what? And I always, I don't, I never regretted it because I couldn't do it. Right. Period. Right. Right. Second is that the perfect guy did it. Yeah. You know the perfect guy did it. But I always felt that I never asked David, and I should one day, because I was never on The Sopranos. I am the only Italian. There's two Italians who were never on The Sopranos. Right. <laughs> Me and Paul and, Servino. <laughs> <laughs> was, he never, was he never he on? He was never on. Nope. So there's three. Oh, I'm I guess. sorry. There's three. There's me, Paul Zavino, <clears throat> and John Totoro. Oh, that, okay. John we Turturro. were never, I was never asked. <laughs> and I always felt, gee, maybe he he held that against me for doing that. But then people, somebody told me, nah, I don't I think. I think, you know was. what? He stayed away from the huge stars. <laughs> I think you know he, he wanted, yeah. Because I, I, I ran into, um, oh man, I ran into a, a few people. Uh, and they they said that basically they they wanted to be on the show, but they they were too too big to be on the show. Yeah. Like, I, I ran into Bruce Willis uh, in in Los Angeles when we were at yeah. the Emmys, and uh, he said, you know, I really wanted to be. I spoke to David, and and he said, you know, you, you you'd have to play yourself because you're just too big of a star, you know. Yeah. And he didn't want to do that. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and and yeah, and I was on fire in seventy, yeah, nineteen, yeah. So whatever reason, but. I always thought about that because I love the show. I always, yeah, I always yeah. championed the show. I championed the cast, uh, and and you know, and obviously some people have passed. Tony Sirico, oh, who was oh, great on the show, unbelievable, one of the funniest characters, man. One of the funniest absolutely. characters, you know, just him sitting there with the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know. I mean, his, some of his lines were just classic, man. Really. Yeah, yeah it's just... I love one of his fa one of my favorite lines. I fell off the couch. It was him. He was talking to uh, Bobby, the character Bobby. What's his last name? Bobby Bacala. Oh yeah, uh, Steve Sharippa. Steve Sharippa, and the other guy was he was the guy who was gay and was very heavy. Right. And he walks over, and one's fat and one's fat, and he goes, <laughs> hey, look at this. He goes, before and way, way before. before. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a classic I, one. I I fell off <laughs> the couch. I literally fell off. Look at this. Before and way before. <laughs> oh, it's great. You know, oh, I, my God. I don't know God. if you know this, but I actually auditioned for another role the year before. For the first for the first season. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah. And I when I was so excited because I I kept calling my my agent and saying anything anything come yeah. through, 
Uh, and he says, yeah, I got something, you know, it's a couple episodes. I said, perfect. Cause I don't, I don't want any day player or yeah, right, under right. five. Sure. You know, this is too important. It's, I, I saw, yeah, right. so I, I said, um, and this was, this was actually the beginning of the first, of, uh, the, of the second season. So I get the thing and it's, it says, uh, a John Gotti type. <laughs> I had long hair. I was 34. I think John Gotti was in his fifties at the time. Sure. You know, uh, I'm like, I call him up. I said, Hey Bob, you know, uh, I said, this is this is not me, man. I said this is like he goes. Well, I sent your picture, and you know. So look, as actors, we do what we got to do. You we do go what in, you do, right. do the audition, great audition, right? But you know, crickets. You know, you didn't hear anything, and then you see who they got. Vince Curatola, brilliant actor. Yes, man. he he was is so he, perfect. Is, is for he still it. around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I thought he is. Yeah, yeah he's not, still not around. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's who I would have picked <laughs> if yeah, I were casting. You, you got to. Look, casting was superb on that show. Casting is everything. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. And Monty Scorsese and Woody Allen would mm -hmm. both agree that they used to say casting is 80, uh, 95. directing is 85% casting. Yeah. Yes, that's right. If you got to tell the, success the actor, of a film, right? Right. If you got to tell the actor how to play the part, you got the wrong actor. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You got the wrong actor. I mean, you just. Casting, you got to cast the right people in the role. I agree. I Otherwise, agree. you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, as you, you've been directing. I've directed a couple of films. Yeah. Uh, you know, a feature film called The Brooklyn Banker that I directed. Yeah. And the producers uh, really wanted. They were hot on this one actor who they thought was going to really blow up. Yeah. The next year, and I, and I kept pleading my my case that he, this guy was wrong for the part for the part of the lead role. They, they don't hear that. No, they didn't hear that. They just heard that their the agent said that this guy's going to blow up right. because of all these films that he's doing. Well, he was absolutely wrong for the role, and I stuck to my guns, and I said, give me more tapes. And I wound up finding a guy by the name of Troy Garrity who played a lead. This kid was yeah. brilliant right. in the film. So at least you could look at the movie <clears throat> and be proud of it. Yes, that's right. That's right. exactly right. As opposed to like, why did I give in? Why did I do that? Yeah. You know, I remember Blake Edwards, the great director, and he, always, and he said to me once, I, I, I had... I sat down, had dinner with him, and he said, Chaz, it's better to die with your own guns at your side than having somebody else's guns. At least you say, this is what I wanted. It right. failed, yes. but this is what I wanted. Well, here, here's the thing. They said to me, you got, can you have an open mind and at least meet with the guy? I said, all right, yes, yes. I, will, I, I will meet with him. Well, they get back to me the next day and say, well, they'll meet with you. He'll meet with you if you offer him the job. <laughs> I'm like, forget about it. That's it. That's, we're done. We're done after yeah, that. Yeah. No, you you have to respect the director who says he wants to meet with me. I get it. Yep. And this guy who was the grandson of of Henry Fonda, he flew in from Los Angeles on his own dime. Yeah. We met for two hours, talked about painting, talked right. about acting, talked about everything. His grandfather was a painter as well. Right. And uh, so yeah, so yeah, it was. Uh, but it was, but this famous guy that was supposed to blow up, did he ever blow up? No. No. No, he did a couple of good films. He's a decent actor. We don't have to say his name. Yeah, he's but is a decent he, actor. Is he still in the business? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. There with you go. He did All a right. couple of good films after. You know. Yeah, agents. Yeah, he's gonna blow up. <laughs> he's blowing up big. Yep. Agents are like uh, you know used car salesmen. You know this car ain't coming yes. around often. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is a cream puff. You know. Now come on, man. I mean. Yeah. I don't care who it is. If if he's not right, he's not yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. It was it was a bit disrespectful too. I mean, you know, if you're directing a film, okay, it was my first feature film. I had directed a bunch of uh, other uh, right. shorts and commercials and things, but you know, uh, and you know how you had Paul Servino in it, uh, David Proval, well, you, you, incredible oh, actor. Davy, Davy's great. Oh God. Yeah. I mean, you got great actors, and I got to be honest with you, I'm the type of actor that. A, I say, you, you, I don't think I'm right for this. Me I've too. Said that. I'm the same thing. I'm the same way. I mean, I've I don't even said know why that. my agent is still with me. Uh, I, <laughs> I turned down a lot of stuff. Uh, man. I've said that to people. I go, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I, I'm too, too old to play this. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're going to want somebody. You know, that's exactly what I told my agent. I said, I'm too young for this role. Yeah. I said, just go in anyway, you know? Yeah. You know, I did it, I, you know, just for, the, for being there and them but seeing But you me. ended up doing it, then you got called in for the other for the, thing. Yes, see, exactly. See, so that's what I always tell actors. Go to the audition. Yep, that's true. Go to the audition because- It's great practice. It's, it's great, great practice. Yeah. And, and they might, 
If they look at you, they go, hey, remember that guy we saw for that other role? Bring him in. That's yeah, what it's yeah, about. It's because in our business, it's out of sight, out of mind. Absolutely. If you're not in front of their face, oh, wow, this guy would be great. And yeah. then after, <laughs> after yeah. I finished, this, is, this brings up the fact that everyone in Hollywood thought I spoke with an Italian accent. <laughs> right. <laughs> because uh, I had, so I had to go out there and undo that, reintroduce myself, you know, and say, and, and like, wait a minute. Oh man, you would have been great for this, but we tossed you aside. We thought we thought you were going to well, speak well, with an Italian accent. Obviously, you were born in Italy. Yes, I was born. Yes, that's in right. In Naples. In Napoli. That's Napoli. right. In the home with a midwife. My aunt was the my my aunt was the midwife who delivered me in the home in, in Naples. In the home. Yeah. Wow. She became a nun after that. I wonder wow. why. <laughs> so when you see when you did an accent, I went. Now that's an Italian accent. As opposed to these people, they get up there and they do these fake accents. Oh, I can't stand it. I think that, you know, I, I have, there's music in my family. Like you, you're, you're a musician. I know your right. background. Uh, there's, there's a lot of musicians in my, in my family. Even my father, my brother played guitar for many years and wrote music. Uh, I play a little bit of the uh, blues harp, you know. Yes. Uh, and so having a musical ear, you're very in tune to, to accents and to dialects. Right. So... Those, when I would hear like an, uh, an accent that was off, like an Italian accent, oh, it would just drive me nuts. Like, like a bad Italian accent when they do. I remember I played uh, uh, Judge Giovanni Falcone, oh, and yeah. I just worked with this dialect coach because I said, look, man, I don't want to sound like an idiot. So, you know, you got to, I mean, you got to work at you it. You did a great job. I saw that. That yeah. was, oh, it was a phenomenal but film. You got to... True story, you, by the way. Yeah, true story. But you got to, when you do an accent, see, you didn't have to work on it. You, you knew. No, I actually, believe you it did? or not, I, I, I grew up around, I grew up in Patterson, New Jersey on 21st Ave, right? Right. And uh, it was largely um, Napolitan and Sicilian and also Montescalioso, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, and so I, would, I would always listen to these different accents, you know? And obviously, you know, I grew up listening to my father, which uh, had, who had a Napolitan accent. Right. He was, uh, he was born in Salerno, and uh, the provincia di Salerno, as we say. Yes. You know, the province yes. of Salerno. And uh, so I would always listen to him. And of course, I had uncles, my uncle Hugo in Canada. They had these wonderful accents when they spoke uh, it, English, you know. Right, right. And so I would go back. And then I went, when I got the job, when I got hired as uh, Furio, I went back to Patterson, New Jersey, to really listen in the in the social clubs that they have there to really listen to the uh the way they spoke and the nuances that that were in the inflections of their accent uh to really get in on the neapolitan side i would hear the the, the sicilian speak and when they spoke english they it was different it was know? different yeah yes yeah. now when you went in for the audition for furio did you have to speak with an accent yeah I so did. they asked you do well, it that, with an accent well that was one of the requirements actually you had to you have to speak fluent Italian and also uh, speak with a convincing Italian accent. And, you know, I had done uh, maybe a, a year or two before that, I, I, I did a regional production of A View from the Bridge. Yes. Where I played Marco, one of the yes. Sicilians that yes. came in. And, uh, you know, uh, so I really had to, to kind of go back to my neighborhood and listen to the Sicilians at that time. Right. So I, I wanted that that proper Sicilian accent. You know? Right. And when I spoke in Italian, uh, in Sicilian, like, uh, you know, that's, that's Sicilian. That's Sicilian. Yeah. And I, what I just said was tell him, you know, how, how am I going to get married if I'm going to be in jail? You know what I mean? Or if you're going to be in jail. Right, right, right. You know, that was part of, part yeah, of one of the- Yeah, my mother spoke the yeah. dialogue. The Did dialogue, the dialogue yeah, really? Sicilian. Oh, and wow. my father didn't speak it, no. And both of them were- Born in Sicily. Yeah. Both of wow. them. Born there. You know, and, uh, wait, I'm sorry. Nope. They went up. I met my grandmother. Your grandparents sorry, my, were born there? My grandparents spoke the dialect. My mm. grandfather and my grandmother. My parents were born. They, as soon as they came over, they had my uh, mother and, and his parents had him. Uh, I, I, was, I was misquoting myself there. And I always remember that dialect was very strong, you know. And, yeah, yeah. Harsh. It was Harsh. really, yeah, yeah. But, but that's, that's the deep, that's, that's the deep Sicilian, yeah. Yeah, that was deep. Now, deep, yeah. I have to say one thing about Naples, because I always said uh, th there's two places that have the best food. Oh, the best right food. On, yeah. I love Sicily because, you know, Linguini Vongola, I can't get it anywhere. It, it, uh, to me, it says, in Sicily, I have great food. 
But the other place, I say, I don't know, It's I got to put it right up there. Maybe <laughs> when it comes to pizza, margarita, is, is Naples is, why is the food so fucking great there? Better oh, be. man, it's just, they, 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 you know what? You know, the Italians, I mean, you know, they're artists. You know, it's, it's, they call it culinary arts, and it really is an art. Yes. And they absolutely love what, you know, when, <sighs> what we do, you know, when, we, when, we, when we're writing or when we're acting or directing, yeah. it's, we would do it for free, right? Yeah. It, because we know we love what we're doing, you know? Um, obviously, you know, we don't do it for free anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it, that's, when I, when I, when, you know, when I'm painting or, you know, a drawing or something, you know, you're not thinking of, you know, money at the time. You're thinking of, wow, I want to do the best possible job I can right, in this. Right. And that's what they do. That's, that's the reason, because they love cooking. They love, you know, creating, you know, something that someone else is going to love when, is they, when it, they taste is it. Is it in the, in the region, the tomatoes are so it's, good? It's, is everything it? is, you know, I, everything is fresher there. <laughs> I, I don't it's, understand. It's, you know, they grow everything fresh. You know, when I was, when I was in Italy, I, I only lived there till like three and a half years old, right? And right. Then we came, came to America. Uh, so my mother, you know, over there, they, who had refrigerators? Nobody had refrigerators. That's correct. You know yeah. what I mean? So you would, you would buy everything fresh every, every day. day. Yeah, right. So you were eating fresh. You know, whether it was fish or you go to the market and buy the vegetables, everything was grown right. in the area. Was your mother a great cook? Oh, my God. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know, she's she's uh, Bade's, my mother. And that's, oh, that's right. Your mother's Bade's. Baron, and the Bade's cooking. Oh, it's phenomenal. Different. It's incredible. Incredible. Yeah. But she's incredibly talented. You know, she... Uh, you know, she picked up all of the, the you know, the the, um, the cuisine from Naples because she lived there. Obviously, we, you know, we lived there for many years too. Uh, but uh, did yeah, your da- did your dad cook? My father cooked as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know one Napolitano who doesn't cook. Oh, yeah. You cook too? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little know? bit. Yeah. Well, having a having a mom like uh, you know that could cook like that, you very rarely you know want to be in her way. <laughs> yeah, just let her do yeah, her yeah, thing. Exactly. Wow. Now you're you're married, right? Yeah. To uh, Yvonne Maria Schaefer, yeah. she's uh, an incredible, incredible woman. Uh, she is, uh, she, I mean, she's been in front of the camera since she was a toddler right, right, in Germany. Right. Uh, yes. Modeled and actor, you know, all over Europe. Yes. And then uh, now she's, uh, she's here, she's, she's producing. Fantastic. Uh, she goes back and forth by, you know, she's uh, in Germany a lot and, and here as well. And so, uh, now uh, she's German. She's German. Yeah, she's Complain. German. She doesn't look German. She, no, she doesn't. She looks look, South American. She, she looks. Look, yeah, yeah, she doesn't look German. Uh, I yeah. think it's because of her grandfather, or grandmother. Or and how many years you marry now? Twenty eleven. Wow. It, you know, it kept it on the down low. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you know, it's uh, wow, that's, it's that's just fantastic. Uh, it's a great thing. I, I love her very much. Well, I, I hope yeah. so. Yes, because yeah. uh, shout out to her right now. Yes. Ciao, yes. Bella. Yes. <laughs> now. A lot of people look at you, oh, actor, great actor, Furio. Oh, that's Furio. I know him a long time, folks. And I don't know, I might put your, you as an artist above the actor because you're such an incredible artist. And, Thank you. And we're talking about not a guy who does something once in a while. I mean, this, this man is a, a great artist. And Thank you. we put a few of his art pieces behind me. Now, uh, this is done in charcoal, you said. Yes, these these two, the black and white uh, portraits. Okay, are... tell us about this one here, <clears throat> Federico. This is a friend of mine. I see him uh, mostly every Sunday at Sorrento's Bakery in in uh, East Hanover, New Jersey. <laughs> his name his name is Kevin Boykins. Uh, okay, he put in uh, over twenty something years as a uh, as a police officer uh, in the Newark area. Wow! Thank you for your service, yes, Kevin. Thank you, thanks, Kevin. Uh, great guy. Yeah. And I, had, I think he's got just a wonderful face, and I wanted to include him in the series of uh, photorealistic portraits that I'm doing to uh, to have an exhibition with this this fall. So um, he posed for me. All uh, in charcoal. All in charcoal. This is all charcoal. Yes. Wow. And this gentleman here uh, doesn't speak a word of English. <laughs> he's he's actually um, an Italian uh, art dealer, third generation art dealer. His name is Alberto Quadri. Yeah. And uh, I bought paintings from him in Rome and, uh, you know, Via dei Coronari. He had a, he had a, he had a place there and, uh, right. in, in Rome. You remember, we, used, we, we went close to there a couple of times. That's correct. So, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, uh, you know, and so these are, these are portraits. They're, they're very sort of, it's got this introspective kind of look. Yeah. Um, 
And, uh, I, you know, it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. Normally I paint from life, but with these, I'm, I'm actually using photographs. Well, what I do is I'll take a, f a photo right on my iPhone and then I, I'll change it. I'll manipulate it into black and white. And then I'll use an iPad to draw from. And that's, that's basically how I can do it. So, you know, as, as you get older, you need glasses. <laughs> I, I need glasses. And, uh, so with the iPad, I can, I can make it larger and see all the details. And that's how I, I basically draw. I mean, the hair, the, the yes. leather, the, the texture of the jacket, the, the, the jacket being worn like that. I, I got to tell you, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's fucking brilliant, well, man. Well, thank you. I, I, I really like to, to concentrate and focus on different textures and the details. And that's, that's how I like to work also as an actor and a director. Yeah. I, I think is you know, the, the devil's in the details, yeah, as I, I mean, say. Yeah, I mean, I look at it, the, 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 the texture, the face. I mean, I thought it was a photograph. Yeah, that's, that's the initial kind of like yeah. initial impact, I think, that uh, people will get when they see this exhibition. So I, I'm, I'm working on the eighth piece right now, and uh, um, I think, you know, I'm looking to, to have like 12 in total. 12. 12 pieces, yeah, right. which will make a nice exhibition. And uh, it'll be in New York City somewhere. In New York know. City? Yeah. Oh well, man, can yeah, I get in on? Of you course, want? man. I'll post for you. Oh, just kidding. I'll post for you anything. All right, man. Did I jump on that it. or what? <laughs> and what is this right here? This is what we call a moment, a memento mori, a reminder of our mortality. Um, I've been fascinated with uh, with this subject for a long time, and you'll see it. Mortality. Kind of, yes, mortality. Um, right. The fact that you know. Um, you know, we're, we're here for a certain amount of time. True. And, you know, you can either make the best of it or not, you know. And people forget. People, we, we forget that we're going to die, you know. And this is just a reminder for, for me to, to do as much as I can. There's not enough time in a day for me to do everything yes. that I want to do, you know. And you got to do it properly. You got to put yeah. the time into it. You know, some of these pieces have 150 hours, 200 hours, some of the ones that I've done with backgrounds and stuff. You know, it's... It's serious time and, and dedication and devotion that you have to put into, wow. into doing something like this. It's with any art. It's with anything. And this here is a... This is a dried rose. And but it's dried it's like dried. it died. Exactly. It was living at one point and it's died. You know, there's um, in Italy, when you go into these old towns, uh, you'll, sometimes you'll see these 13th century churches and sometimes you'll see a memento mori, or, you know, a, a skull. And, and then there's a saying that's sculpted in there. And it says, uh, <laughs> as you are, I was, and as I am, you will be. Wow. And so that, it, it kind of hits me very deep inside. Wow, yes, you know? yes. And it, it tells me that I really need to do everything that I need, that I need to get done wow. in this life. And then you'll see a little fly there, a blue bottle fly. That's very, you know, if you, it's in the shadow, but... That's also a, a device that was used in the Renaissance and, and uh, in the Baroque period. Yes. Uh, to, to show death as well. To you show know, death, a fly. To show death, yeah. A living fly. A living fly, yeah. And this is, you know, I use it to show something that is alive, actually, in this, in this particular. Now, this, this probably is a dumb question, but I have to ask it. Could, you, could people tell if that's a man or a woman? Sometimes, yeah. There's you can? The, yes, yes. And also you could tell the age by... Um, the sutures, you know, if you, if you take a skull and you look at the sutures, that's where the skull joins when, when we're being born, you know, yeah. it joins and, you know, and it's still very soft. Uh, when the sutures are sort of dissipating and they get very, very kind of, you know, you don't see them too well, then the person is very old. Um, when they're really sharp and everything, you know, you can tell that it's a younger person. I never knew that. Now, what would you say... I mean, one day you're a young boy. You grow. You grew up in. Uh, you were born. When did you know? Hey, um, <laughs> shit! I could. I could draw. When, when did? The, how did this happen? I knew it very early on. I was very uh, sort of visually acute from a very young age. Right. Like I, I remember all the rooms, which way the light was coming in, and my in the apartment we lived in in, in Naples. Uh, I remember the 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 type of doorknobs, the ones that kind of come down like yes. this because you're at eye level with those doorknobs pretty right. much so the, the, visually i i was very in tune uh but also 
when my when I would watch my older sister, my my older brother draw. The, so I they would, were they were drew- yeah. Everybody's really in my family. Everybody could draw. Everybody's artistic. Your mother, I, your father. My mother, not so much. But there's also art on that that side of the family. Okay. My father could draw. He was he was in Naples. He was yeah. he used to paint and stuff like that. And you know, and uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. And so you you said all right. But when yeah, did when but did you I would know? get excited when I would see you know I knew there was something there because I would get so excited watching you know something from nothing a white piece of paper and then all of a sudden you know my sister would draw a horse and and it came to life it was like that would really excite me and then of course I we had prints all around the house you know impressionist yeah. prints some old master prints you know that my my parents had up so those were really the first visually the first things I saw and yeah. when I studied art, when I studied painting at the uh, School of Visual Arts and Media Arts, um, you know, I, I really gravitated towards the uh, the masters, and that's where that's really what I feel. Those are the shoulders that artists today stand on. And the on. masters would be Raphael. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, all all the great all the masters. Great. But I, you know, the, that you're talking about Renaissance, you know, yeah. Ra- Raffaello, and you know, uh, a lot of the a lot of those people. But I'm talking about um, right after the Renaissance came the Baroque period. The Baroque, yes. Yeah, so that's that's the beginning of the 17th century, in the 1600s. And who are your, your, the people you really copied? Oh, really? Oh, my God. Napolitano, Luca Giordano. Luca Giordano is one of my favorite painters. And, of course, Guercino, which was a, a painter that I studied when I was in school. Uh, I did a paper on, on one of his paintings that's at the Met, and then I ultimately wound up discovering a lost masterpiece uh, uh, on that particular painter. Wow. Uh, you were yeah. the guy who, and I, I, I saw his work, but I, I learned from you and J- Julian Schnabel about Caravaggio. See, si, Caravaggio. That's Caravaggio. right. Caravaggio. And he was. He was incredible. Uh, that, he, changed, he changed painting in, in the 17th century. Right. Uh, yeah, he, he really, people, I mean, he had followers all over Europe. Because before that, they painted these holy figures. Exactly. Then and he, he brought them back down to earth. He said prostitutes and exactly. murderers. And he would have movement in his paintings. I exactly. remember. Exactly, and, and and also it was these his chiaroscuro, which was the light and dark. Yes. And, and the way he posed his figures, um, he did very. There are no existing drawings, as we know, uh, of 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 uh, Caravaggio's works. He's, he's, and but what we know about him is that he actually posed the people there and actually drew with a brush, and and you know did mistakes and then covered them. So when you Right now we have forensics, right? We have right. infrared reflectography, right. and we have uh, uh, X radiographs. And what they do is they look underneath the paint layer, and they could see these mistakes that he made. These adjustments they call them pentimenti, pentiments. Yes. And say so when you when you make an adjustment like that, you can't once you put paint to canvas, you can't erase that. So you have to paint over it. So it's always there underneath there. So that tells you it's an original composition, and it tells you that you know. That you know, you may have an original Caravaggio there. <laughs> what is the most expensive Caravaggio you think painting? Oh man, I think uh, one was recently discovered. Uh, in well, not recently. It was this. There's a long story about it, but I know the gentleman who uh, who owns it in in uh, Rome, and right now it's on exhibition in in Rome, and it's the Taking of Christ. There was always one. There was always the, the, there was two paintings by the Taking of Christ. One was always known as a period copy, but with x-rays and what I just told you, right. they found out that there was, first of all, that it's a, a larger size, and then there's other figures painted out underneath. So it's the first version that he did, and then he improved on it in the second version. So that, that's worth millions, right? Millions. millions. Yeah, yeah, hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah, because the Leonardo da Vinci sold for, uh, what, $450 million at Christie's. This was uh, several years ago. It was the uh, the the self self portrait. It was the no no. It was the Leonardo da Vinci, uh, um, the, the the Christ. Uh, forget the the, the, the Christ Salvatore fig- Mundi. Salva- Salvatore Mundi. Was, you know, was that the Christ figures? No no. It was what? just one figure. It was a, he was holding the uh, crystal. Globe. I saw that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That, Holy that sold shit. For four hundred and fifty. Four hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Mohammed bin Salman has it. <laughs> yep. It's in Saudi Arabia. I mean, you can almost say it's. It's a good investment. It's a, <laughs> yeah. I guess you could. I mean, you could, right? Yeah, yeah. Art. You can never go wrong with art. I mean, I read that art. That art. Uh, 
you know, appreciates much faster than the stock exchange and anything else. Could be, especially in the past few years, twenty. If you bought art years ago, yes, that's true. It's fascinating when you. Uh, it's 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 just fascinating. But I love you know, I I I've been collecting seventeenth century uh, Italian masters mainly. Yes, and uh, for for many years, like twenty six years, something like that. It's a I I have a, a very you know respectable i heard you got a great art collection so it's, yes. it's a respectable collection and you know uh i've learned i've loaned my paintings to different exhibitions here and right. overseas um but i love looking at them when i go away i i think man I'm, i actually miss my paintings i miss the yeah painting. no look, I, I get it i they, get it i understand that. they're all around yeah. me I, I look at them every day they inspire me they inspire my work yeah because um, I, I remember I remember great paintings that I saw. I remember um, who painted it. Was it Titan? Uh, Titian. Am Titian. I saying it right? Tiziano Vecello. Yeah. They, called Titian. Titian. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And he did, uh, was it the guys playing poker or something? Oh, God, it's a famous painting. I don't know if you remember. No. But, oh, my God, I, I could look at these paintings and just... I could dream, like I yeah. could, I could look at it. Titian, I, yeah, it was a Venetian painter, yeah, you know, late Renaissance. Uh, a lot of, a lot of people, f you know, were around him, like Tintoretto yeah. and Palma il Giovane. I have several paintings by Palma il Giovane and drawings as well. Do you know when you see a painting that this? Do you buy it for like this could be valuable, or you buy it because you love it? You, you have to. Every collector should buy what they love. That's it, what I heard. Yeah, yeah. You really got to love it. You got to really say, "Man, I can't, can't live without that thing." It's got to, it's got to be on my wall. <laughs> yeah, I have to look at. it. I have to look at it. Right. Yeah. There's a painting that I loved. It was about this uh, woman. She was handicapped in a, in a field, looking up at the house, and it was called Christine. Oh God, I can't remember. Christina's world. Or Christina's world. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Andrew it, Wyeth. Andrew Wyatt. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And every time I look at that painting, I don't know she's what it is. She's in the field and she can't. She can't walk. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, that's it. Andrew yeah, yeah, Wyatt. Yeah. And every time I look at that painting, I just, I don't know. I dream yeah, like. It's, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful image. Uh, I, inspirational, actually. Yeah. Then you get and then and uh, and I don't want to say you know, but what did you think of Norman Rockwell? Loved him. I, I studied illustration. I don't yeah. know. Most people don't know this, but I was an illustrator for a number of years. Oh, okay. When I was uh, going through school, um, what wound up happening? I was in I was in high school, right. and uh, right after school, I would go work and and I would do illustrations in the newspaper, the local newspaper, right. Pat Patterson. And I was in this little booth, right, with right. The, the art director. That her name was Lynn Bins. Right. <laughs> and you know, all of a sudden, one day, this this reporter comes in, and she says. Yeah, she was very excited. She says, "Guess who I'm going to interview this week? It's going it's George Burns." And I was like, "George Burns? I love George Burns." And I turn yeah. around. You know what? I I love George Burns. Wouldn't it be a great story if uh, a young artist <laughs> did a portrait of him and we yeah. we you know, we presented it to him, you know. She was like, "Who the hell is this guy?" <laughs> she walked away. 2 hours later, she comes back. You know, I made a few phone calls. You have 1 week to do that painting and we're going to present it to George Burns at the Plaza Hotel in one week. I was like, are you kidding me? I thought she was joking me. One week? Is yeah. that possible? I did it in one week. I, I bought, I, I, I ran out of there, out of the, where I was working. I went to a bookstore. I bought his autobiography that was just out recently. And I, I just read it overnight. And the next day I went to this place called Jerry Olinger's. And they were, he was on 14th Street. And they had pictures of every celebrity under the sun. And so I, I bought some pictures of, of uh, George Burns. I, I sort of composed, uh, you know, the different parts of his life. You know, when, when he was in vaudeville, yeah. when he won the Oscar, and yeah. he was Gracie. And in the center, he's just holding his proverbial cigar, you know, in his suit. And it was great, man. Cause, uh, and then it was from there that when I presented it, when we gave him the painting, and he was like, uh, Frank Goodman was, uh, was the head of uh, PR at, uh, at channel, uh, PBS at the time. And he said, Frank, let's do something for the kid. So it was really an actor that gave me my start in my <laughs> career as an artist. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And he, probably George still has it in his family. Probably. They did, yeah. They actually, you know what? When he, when he passed, it, it, it's, his, all of his, his estate sold through Sotheby's or Christie's. Yeah. And a friend of mine who knew the painting, because he came over when I was painting it, yeah. 
uh, said, you know what? I, they just panned across George Burns' things, and I saw your painting. Wow. So it actually sold in, in that auction. In Sotheby's? Yeah. Wow. And Picasso, obviously, you yes. love Picasso. Oh, I love Picasso. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, you know, I have a friend that has uh, about six or seven paintings by Picasso. Yeah. And I, when, when I go there, I'm pretty amazed. But the thing is that Picasso... A lot of people don't know this. They just they just know his you know his uh, the cubist style, but he was a trained painter. He was a, he was a, a classical painter. Uh, I think he's you know his at the age of thirteen or fourteen, his father quit because he said he was he was he just couldn't be as good as his son, you know. And and so he uh, you know you get to a point where there's uh, there's just um, you know people looking for something new. You know yeah. what I mean, and so you it's, change. It's you know? the people who break the trend. They break the trend exactly, yes. and, like uh, like like Jackson Pollock did. Exactly. So he, you know, Picasso was was known as the father of of Cubism. You know, he invented Cubism, basically. Yes. You know, and, wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, well, Federico, it's it's really been a pleasure. But I yes. know you got uh, before we sign off. Oh yeah. There's a couple of things. Where are you going to be? Or uh, oh, yeah. tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. I have a film out now. I've got a few scenes, nice scenes, uh, in Cabrini. Uh, a Mother Cabrini. Mother, yes, in Mother Cabrini. Fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, also uh, some conventions. You know, I, I'm doing Paisan Khan, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing that uh, this, this, this young actor, comedian, and he does a great Tony Soprano. <laughs> His name is Nick Petito. And okay. He, he and uh, Billy Pompeo have put this Italian convention together. And it's called Paisanacon. Paisancon. Yeah. Paisancon. Which okay. is it's celebrating everything Italian, you know. And uh, when is it? It's going to be April thirteenth and fourteenth in Fairlawn, New Jersey. Fantastic. It's going to be wonderful. And uh, and then you know I have a a, a film that uh, that I've been you know working on that uh, that I've been asked to direct, which is called The Backyard, and I think it's a really wonderful script. So that's that's something I'm working on right now. Oh, well, that's fantastic! And uh, listen, and Sopranos is more popular now than it was know, when it right? was on. Twenty five years later, it's like we have all new fans. There's a new contingency of fans, like young kids, young that kids weren't even alive then. <laughs> who weren't even alive? I know. It's that's awesome. Fun. It's really awesome. Well, you know what they say: true art passes the test of time. That's very true. That's, that's what it what, says. I, this this is the way I look at it. Once a work of art is great. It's always great. It's always great. What did you feel about Andy Warhol's art? I, you know, I didn't mind it. I think he he started off as an illustrator, and right. uh, he came up with a you know with an idea, and he he went with it, and you know, it sold. It sold. Yeah, it's it's you, amazing. You be, so yeah, you got to be happy for people like that. You know, they, well, that's nice yeah. that you are. I'm always happy for everybody. Me too. Me too. You know, I want everybody to make. You know, I want everybody as much to do well because you know, there's yeah. a, people think the world has got. Five slices, and if somebody takes one of the slices, shit, there's only no, four no, left. I feel the world's got 16 too. billion slices. Me too. Well, that's why you're a good guy. It's Thank a pleasure you. to have you on the show. Yes, it's my pleasure, really. It's my pleasure. God right. bless. Thanks. Thanks so much. 